because it's not about deferring, it's not about spending a dollar to save 37 cents, because this is a mistake I see tons of business owners and marketers make. And rather than try to save money and try to invest money outside of your business, waiting for 10 or 20 years, this 20 minute to one hour call should save the equivalent in cash flow for you that year. All right, we're just gonna dive right in, and I'm gonna start with the thing that is probably your biggest unwanted affiliate partner, the IRS. Like, tons of people are tipping the government unnecessarily and inadvertently, and I wanna give you strategies you can put on the ground within 24 hours that are substantial strategies. I feel like most of the financial world unfortunately talks about how people can scrimp and save and sacrifice and budget, and then they come to you as a business owner where you're really good at making money, and they try to separate you from that money in a retirement plan that isn't gonna save anyone taxes. If you put your money in a retirement plan, you are likely to pay more taxes in the future. The first reason, the government's $21 trillion in debt. Can you imagine someone coming up to you and saying, hey, why don't we partner? And then you find out that partner's $21 trillion in debt. You think they're gonna lower taxes in the future? Or you have a financial person that tells you, oh, it's okay, you'll be in a lower tax bracket in the future. Who's here because they wanna make less money? That's asinine. So instead, I'm gonna give you a framework and hopefully make taxes a little bit more fun than normal because it's not about deferring, it's not about spending a dollar to save 37 cents because this is a mistake I see tons of business owners and marketers make. They have a good year and then they go, okay, what am I gonna buy? And then you buy things you wouldn't have otherwise and by spending that dollar, you let the tax tail wag the dog. You spend a dollar, you save 37 cents and you lose 63 cents. If you're gonna do something like that, everyone here should know about tax arbitrage. Tax arbitrage is when you spend a dollar and you save more than a dollar. Like there's people in the room that we've done case studies with. Like one example is, anyone in here ever bought artwork before? I mean, you can actually buy art collections and then after owning it for three years, donate it and get back $2 for every dollars you spend. That's tax arbitrage. Right? Or if you own a building, you can learn about a historic easement or a conservation easement, which are ways that you can get two or three dollars for every dollar you spend on the real estate that you have. So I'll, I'll go through really specific strategies there, but let me break it down into a framework. The first part of the framework to save tax begins with the right team. Now, this is simple, yet probably the most hard part of it. You've got to have a bookkeeper, a controller, or a CFO, depending on your size of business, and then the two other pieces that are gonna save you the most tax other than the data collection is a tax strategist. Now some CPAs are tax strategists, most are not. Most CPAs are historians that tell you how much you've earned and what percentage of tax you have to pay because of that, right? A tax strategist actually meets with you proactively and talks about things that will add money to your life. The third piece, and this is where the biggest tax advantages come from, are a corporate or tax attorney that specializes in tax. What they're gonna help you do is reclassify your income so you pay a lot less tax, and then anyone here own a building, like actually still own a brick and mortar and operate out of? If that's the case, you wanna look into an engineer. An engineer can allow you to do cost segregation and accelerate the rate at which you take tax deductions on buildings. So you build this team, and as an entrepreneur, you meet with the team once a quarter, right? We're talking about maybe 20 minutes, no more than an hour, and rather than try to save money and try to invest money outside of your business, waiting for 10 or 20 years, this 20 minute to one hour call should save the equivalent in cash flow for you that year. So when you get on the phone with them, your job is to be the brainstorming entrepreneur and ask questions. Like here's some good questions to ask. What's the best tax strategy you did for someone else in the last 90 days? How can that apply to me? Then you just start asking about things in your life that you wish you could write off and find out how to write them off. Like I went to Italy last year, and I called my, you know, we had a quarterly call with the team. I said, how can I write off my Italy trip? They're like, well, you can't really write it off. I said, well, let's talk about that for a minute. First off, I have three companies, and I need to do my corporate compliance meeting once a year. What I found is I think better in Italy than I do in the United States, <laughs> and especially with a few glasses of wine. So now I got to write off the corporate compliance meeting because you can travel for that and write it off. The second thing is I said, what if I went and filmed where my great grandfather's from in San Giovanni and I used it in my origin story for a product we're creating? They're like, okay, well then that would merit more write-off. I said, what if I actually hosted a mastermind since I'll be there for two months for one of those days? By the end of that phone call, I had 55% of the trip that I got to legally and ethically write off, right? So you build this team, you meet with them proactively, and here's the big one. Every three years you want to meet retroactively with a different 
accounting or tax professional. Anyone in here customize or modify software? Have you ever taken R&D credits? Because if you haven't taken R&D credits, if you have anyone domestically doing that, you can get credits above what you paid in the tech, like for the employees. You can actually have credits for the time that was spent on it, for your time, for other people that were independent contractors' time. And you can go back three years and get that money back. Or if you've created any information product, or you had to do any research for anything that you did, there's something called domestic production credits. And you can get up to 9% of the net revenue back in tax advantages going back three years. So those are things called 199. You want to look into that because that's a lot of money for a lot of you that's simply being in the know versus just paying those taxes and forgetting about it. All right? So first part is you're building a team. You meet with them quarterly. And then you look back every three years. The next two pieces will make the bigger difference. The second one is deductions. And the best way to get deductions is ask one question. How does this relate to my business? And then secondarily, documenting that. Now, my documentation is pretty rudimentary. I print out the credit card statements. I have the businesses reimburse me for whatever I charge. And I write down what it was for. I've been audited twice in my life. I didn't owe extra money either time because that was suffice for the IRS. So it's just a matter of having some level of documentation. Here's a lot of deductions that most businesses don't take. And this is going to pay for a lot over the next year for you. There's something called the Augusta rule. Okay? The Augusta rule is you can take your home, and you could bring in vendors, employees, customers, and you can actually rent your home out to your business 14 times a year. Now, your business writes a check, and that's tax deductible. When that money comes to you personally, that's tax free as long as it's 14 days or less. So in Austin, if anyone lives here, you can get major write-offs because there's always like Austin city limits and South by Southwest and there's F1 going on. And during those times, you could probably charge three times as much because how much would it cost to go get an Airbnb during that time or a conference room? So this is simply changing how your income comes in. Anyone have kids under 18 years old that they claim? Um, you know, so what you could do is pay them up to $12,000 a year. And the easiest thing to pay kids for is a modeling fee, which is $2,500 as a union standard. So do they show up on a website? Do they show up in an email somewhere? That's $2,500 tax deductible to the business and tax free to them. Just ask, did someone just? Every single year you can take 12,000. If you're having them model on a regular basis, you better be careful because $2,500 is for sure safe. If you go, well, they modeled six different times. Well, it better be very campaign specific, not something static on a website that's being replaced. Per kid. <laughs> Bam. We just saved you so much freaking money if you got that many kids. Now, they cost you a whole hell of a lot more than what you're saving. You know, I figure the least that they could give me is a tax deduction because they're romance and sleep terrorists when they're really young and I deserve to have some of that back in cash, right?